Hello and happy Friday. Welcome to Oil for the Journey. We finally made it to the end of the week, so thank you for joining us once again. Um, today we will be reading 1 Kings chapters 3, 4, and 5. Uh, this coincides with Bridges for Peace Bible reading plan called Ignite the Truth. So um, once again, if you want to go ahead and open your Bibles and we'll just begin in prayer and then start reading his word. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much um, for this day, for the end of the week, for time to commune with you, Lord. Um, thank you for being in our presence, Lord, and faithfully walking with us, um, even when we're not faithfully walking with you, Lord. I pray that you will continue to just pull in our hearts, Lord, um, open our hearts to hear your word, um, and to walk in the way that you would want us to walk. Um, thank you so much for this new season and new life, and as we enter into the the Easter and Passover season, Lord, um, that we will realize what you did for us so many years ago, Lord. Um, and that's the reason why that we can feel you and hear you and, and walk with you today, Lord. And we just thank you so much. Um, I don't even think we can begin to fathom what you actually went through um, with sacrificing your son and um, what Jesus went through, though, too, as well, Lord. Thank you so much for giving us your word. Um, to allow it to lighten our paths each and every day, Lord. Um, and I pray that we will just use this and let it soak into us um, and that we will just uh, remember you and, and look for you throughout the scriptures, Lord, um, and your purpose for us. Thank you again for this community and giving us this time, Lord, um, to be able to dive into your word. And I pray that it will just go forth into the earth and into the world, Lord, that others may hear and know about you. In Jesus' name, amen. So again, we'll be starting 1 Kings uh, chapters 3, 4, and 5. Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married his daughter. He brought her to the city of David until he finished building his palace and the temple of the Lord and the walls around Jerusalem. The people, however, were still sacrificing at the high places because a temple had not yet been built for the name of the Lord. Solomon showed his love for the Lord by walking according to the instructions given him by his father David, except that he offered sacrifices and burnt incense on the high places. The king went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices for what the most important high place, and Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on the altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued the great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern the great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God had said to him, Since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been, a, been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Then Solomon awoke and he realized it had been a dream. He returned to Jerusalem, stood before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then he gave a feast for all his court. Now two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One of them said, Pardon me, my lord. This woman and I live in the same house, and I had a baby while she was there with me. The third day after my child was born, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There was no one in the house but the two of us. During the night, this woman's son died because she laid on him. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side 
while I, your servant, was asleep. She put him by her breast and put her dead song among my breasts. The next morning, I got up to nurse my son, and he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't the son I had born. The other woman said, No, the living one is my son. The dead one is yours. But the first one insisted, No, the dead one is yours. The living one is mine. And so they argued before the king. The king said, This one says, My son is alive and your son is dead. While that one says, No, your son is dead and mine is alive. Then the king said, Bring me a sword. So they brought a sword for the king. He then gave an order, Cut the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. The woman whose son was alive was deeply moved out of love for her son and said to the king, Please, my lord, give her the living baby, don't kill him. But the other said, Neither I nor you shall have him, cut him in two. Then the king gave his ruling, Give the living baby to the first woman. Do not kill him, she is my mother. She is his mother. When all of Israel heard the verdict the king had given, they held the king in awe, because they saw that he had wisdom from God to administer justice. So King Solomon ruled over all of Israel, and then and these were his chief officials, Azariah, son of Zadok, the priest, Elihorpheth, Horeph, and Ahijah, sons of Shisha, secretaries, Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, recorder, Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, commander-in-chief, Zodak and Ab Abiathar, priests, Azar Azariah, son of Nathan, in charge of the district governors, Zabud, son of Nathan, a priest and advisor to the king, Ahishar, palace administrator, Adonariah, son of Abda, in charge of forced labor. Solomon had 12 district governors over all Israel, who supplied provisions for the king and the royal household, each one had to provide supplies for one month in the year. These are their names. Ben Hur in the hill country of Ephraim, Ben Degir in Ma Makaz Shalbim, Bet Shemesh and Elon, Beth Hamanan, Ben Hesed in Aruboth, Sukoth and all of the land of Hepher was, was his. Ben Abidanab in Nophah the door, he was married to Tapatha, daughter of Solomon. Benah, son of Ahilud, in Tanakh and Megiddo, and in all of Bet Shean, next to Zarathan, below Jezreel, from Bet Shean to Abel Mehola, across from Jokamim. Ben Gibir in Ramoth Gilead, the settlements of Jer, son of Manasseh, in Gilead were his, as well as the region of Argob in Bashan and, his, and its sixty large walled cities within Bronze Gates Bars. Ahinaba, son of Edo in Mahanahim, Ahizma in Naphtali, he had married Beset, daughter of Solomon, Benah, son of Hushai, in Asher and Eloth, Jehoshaphat, son of Paruah, in Issachar, Shemiah, son of Ella, in Benjamin, Gebir, son of Uri, in Gilead, the country of Shem, king of the Amorites, and the country of Og, king of Bashan. He was the only governor over the district. The people of Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sand on the seashores. They ate, they drank, and they were happy. And Solomon ruled over all the kingdoms from the Euphrates River to the land of the Philistines, as far as the border of Egypt. These countries brought tribute and were Solomon's subjects all his life. Solomon's daily provisions were 30 cores of the finest flour and 60 cores of milk, 10 head of stall-fed cattle, 20 of pasture-fed cattle, and a hundred sheep and goats, as well as deer, gazelles, roebucks, and choice fowl. For he ruled all over the kingdoms west of the Euphrates River, from Tipsha to Gaza, and had peace on all sides. During Solomon's life, Judah and Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, lived in safety, everyone under their own vine and under their own fig tree. Solomon had 4,000 stalls of chariot horses, the 12,000 horses. The district governors, each in his, in his month, supplied provisions for King Solomon and all who came to the king's table. They saw to it that nothing was lacking. They also brought to the proper place their quotas of barley and straw for the chariot horses and the other horses. God gave Solomon wisdom and, very, and great insight and a breadth of understanding as measureless as the sand on the seashore. Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the people of the east 
and greater than all the wisdom of Egypt. He was wiser than anyone else, including Ethan and Ezra, Ezra height. Ethan the Ezraite, wiser than Haman, Kalko, and Darda, the sons of Mehol, and his fame spread to all the surrounding nations. He spoke three thousand proverbs, and his son songs numbered a thousand and five. He spoke about plant life, from the cedar of Lebanon to the hyssop that grow, grows out the walls. He also spoke about animals and birds, reptiles and fish. From all nations, people came to listen to Solomon's wisdom sent by all the kings of the world who had heard of his wisdom. When Haram, king of Tyre, he heard that Solomon had been anointed king to succeed his father David, he sent his envoys to Solomon. Because he had always been a friendly ter on friendly terms with David, Solomon sent back this message to Haram. You know that because of the wars waged against my father David from all sides, he could not build a temple for the name of the Lord his God until the Lord put his enemies under his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side, and there is no adversary or disaster. I intend, therefore, to build a temple for the name of the Lord my God. As the Lord told my father, David, when he said, Your son, whom I will put on the throne in your place, will build the temple for my name. So give orders that cedars of Lebanon be cut for me. My men will work with yours, and I will pay you for the men whatever wages you set. You know that we have no one skilled in felling timber as, as the Sidonians. When Haram heard Solomon's message, he was greatly pleased and said, Praise be to the Lord today, for he has given David a wise son to rule over the great nation. So Haram sent word to Solomon, I have received the message you sent me, and will do all that you want in providing the cedar and juniper logs. My men will haul them down from Lebanon to the Mediterranean Sea, and I will float them as rafts by the sea to place you specifically. Specify. There I will separate them, and you can take them away. And you are to grant my wish by providing food for my royal household. In this way, Haram and Solomon supplied with all the cedar and juniper logs he wanted. And Solomon gave Haram 20,000 cores of wheat as food for his household in addition to 20,000 baths of pressed oil, olive oil. Solomon continued to do this for Haram year after year. The Lord gave Solomon wisdom, just as he had promised him. There were peaceful relations between Haram and Solomon, and the two of them made a treaty. King Solomon conscripted laborers from all Israel, 30,000 men. He sent them off to Lebanon in ships of 10,000 a month, so that they spent one month in Lebanon and two months at home. Adoniram, Adoniram was in charge of the forced labor. Solomon had 70,000 carriers and 80,000 stone cutters in the hills, as well as 3,300 foremen who supervised the project and directed the workers. At the king's command, they removed from the quarry large blocks of high-grade stone to provide a foundation of dressed stone for the temple. The craftsmen of Solomon and Haram and workers from Byblos Bi cut and prepared the timber and stone for the building of the temple. So that is 1 Kings 3, 4, and 5. So it's leading up to the building of the temple and talks a little bit about where they actually uh, received all of the materials to build the temple. So next week we will start uh, with chapter 6 and that is the beginning of the temple being built. So I hope you come back um, next week to follow along with us again in 1 Kings. And otherwise, you have a wonderful weekend.